Hello my friends, welcome to the Ground Noise. Today I want to show you how to make audio recordings in Cubase using lanes. As you can tell, I will use my guitar as an example, but you can do that with other instruments of course as well. But we're not talking about MIDI parts today, just audio parts, okay? At first let's go through some basic stuff that you definitely want to check out before you start recording so that nothing goes wrong. I've opened an audio track, right click and audio track and make sure that uh, record is enabled, this red button is enabled. So, And also I want to turn on the monitor to see if I have a signal coming in. It's there. In case you don't hear anything, second thing is make sure you check your ASIO driver in the studio setup and of course your guitar is plugged in and you turn up the volume on the guitar, right? And we look at another very important setting, it's in the bottom left corner. In case you don't see this bottom area here, go to the top right corner and click on this symbol, set up window layout and activate transport bar. You see? You definitely want to see that bottom panel here. So let's open the audio record modes and uh, this is my setting. Keep history creates new audio events for any recording or cycle. That's what we want to do because that's the very cool thing about lanes. Lanes is a, is a new word, it's a Cubase word for stack recording. All like in the old days uh, when we opened two or three tracks and recorded the same guitar part on the first track, then on the other track to see which one was the better one. And we kept that and deleted the other one. It's way easier nowadays because all I need to do is to activate the cycle mode so that a loop is going on and everything I will play within that loop will be recorded on only one track. Nicely organized in lanes. But you know what? Let's just start recording. Then you will see how it works. It's very cool. So that was nice, except the last one, but that was intentionally. Now you can see that I've recorded something, but click on this button here, show lanes. And this is what really happened. These are all my takes that I've just played. So this part here on the main track is only a visual representation of um, the active parts. You see, it's uh, the same part as the last part. It, the last part with a mistake and um, I can delete it. Now the second last part is active and what I want to do now is to open my toolbox with a right click and select this tool here, the compare tool and now I can activate with this tool all the different parts and listen through them and decide which one is the best and just activate it. Let's say the second part was the best. I don't know. I think the third one was pretty good. <laughs> Dirty. So this makes it really easy to compare your parts. And also you can, can learn to play really relaxed and enjoy the moment because that's what you want to do when you make a recording and not worrying about jumping between different tracks and make sure everything is activated and whatnot. On the other hand, it can be a problem because it's so easy to record like 20 versions of the part and really get overwhelmed by all of that. So that's what I don't recommend. Instead, I have two things, two main principles I try to follow when I make a recording. First is I just uh, stop playing when I make a mistake. That's what I have did here before with that last part. So this one here. Uh, you can see this is the bad part where I stop playing. Um, this is what I normally do when I make a mistake. I stop playing so it's easier to identify this bad part later between all the 
20 good ones. And of course, you can also say, wait, maybe the beginning of that part was great. Uh, no, not for me. Okay, it's for me, it's a part where I've made a mistake and I don't want to have that on my track, song or whatever. So let's delete it again. And let's talk about editing the parts because you not only want to compare the parts and decide for the best one. No, maybe you think uh, this was a good part in the in the first half, but uh, the second half of part three was even better. So let's just try it. Select all the parts. And this time I choose my scissors here and make a cut in the half and hopefully it works and now again with the compare tool I activate this first half here and take three a second and now we can listen to it can see uh, that they all work pretty well together but only in this case there are many other cases uh, where it doesn't work so well and also it's very important when you make cuts that you solo the track and listen if there is a click or something going on no it's good so be aware that when you make such cuts uh, it can happen that both parts don't fit together very well they are a bit too different so they they create a cracking sound like or the opposite a drop like there's a little moment where it's nothing and the best way to look after such unwanted effects is by soloing the parts of course and you want to do that anyway because bad things can happen you've played a part and that's another good thing about lane recording because in case you have played a very good part but on at, at one moment there is a weird noise on the guitar it can happen like an electronic crack something or a scratchy sound when you change the chords that is a bit too much the chances are high that you have another part available that works better in that moment so you can cut out smaller parts, of course, something like this. Just an example, I have no idea if that sounds good or not. So it's just an example. And of course, you can also do the normal stuff like um, shorten the parts and make them longer and do that as well here. And if you move it further away, then the next part gets activated. And you can also apply fade outs and fade ins, just the normal stuff. And look at the at the main track. It's like I've said before, a visual representation of everything that's happening in the lanes. But I even have some more things to show you. Before I do that, I want to thank you very much for watching this video so long. Please let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. And, uh, you know, this is a very new channel and I'm always looking for new video ideas. So you can help me out with that. Also, consider subscribing. I mean, why not? So here we go. Uh, let's talk about the cycle mode. You see that I've set up the, a very tight loop. Really, it starts on the first, in the first moment and ends in the last moment of this part here. But on some occasions, you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to start the part with a with a slide on the guitar, something like that. Or you want to end the part with a chord, for example, that lasts a little longer. In this case, I just add another bar in the beginning and another one in the end. Oh, I need to turn off solo mode. Okay. I also need to activate the click because there's nothing going on in the first bar. And I now can just start and then hit record to save a little bit uh, count in time. <laughs> What can happen now is that this part here is overlapping with another part on the same track. In this case, I normally just uh, make a new track. I open a new track and record on another one. You know, only because we have lanes and can make stack recordings here in Cubase, it doesn't mean we have to do that all of the time. 
And one more thing, sometimes you want to make a recording on point in the middle of something. And for that, you can use the punch in and punch out function. So let me say I want to record only the second half of our loop here. I set up my markers here and also activate punch in with the I key on my keyboard or this button here. Now I can hit play and I will only be recorded in the second half here automatically. <laughs> In this case, cycle mode was activated. Let's deactivate it and see what's happening again. Punch in. Uh, this is a setting. Uh, you can set it up that it always is on. Uh, in my case, I don't need it so often, so I must uh, activate it every time. <laughs> And the recording continues after the loop. And if I don't want that, I also activate punch out. So punch in and punch out recording is very practical. It's a very basic recording technique that you want to have in your repertoire. Oh, dark clouds are coming up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, leave a comment in the down there and read the show notes. And please don't forget to leave a like before you go, okay? My name is Markus, you've been watching The Ground Noise and I hope to see you soon in the next one.